Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is, well, I suppose you could call it one of those chatty ones, but it's not going to be a big long one. It's just the thoughts that go in to what I've been up to today. And I haven't finished yet, but I thought I'd just take a break. Quite honestly, coffee and a break and a bit of filming and a chat. Um, it's effectively winter time here in the UK and it will be in many other parts of the world. You know, and some parts of the world are going to be a hell of a lot colder than we get in the UK. So you're looking at artificial heating. Artificial heating in the main dries the air out. You need to compensate. All these sorts of things as you go into winter. But really what I want to talk about is the short days and what's going on. Now I've got various types of orchids in here, as you know. <laughs> Lots of types in fact. Um, I did a list once. If, if somebody asked me how many different orchids you've got, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I'd have to go and look at my notes. It, it really is that bad nowadays. Um, but you, you've got things that are different. You've got what I call continuous growers. Now in amongst the dendrobiums, there aren't that many. Yeah? But the Phalaenopsis types, they might slow up a bit in the winter, but they don't stop. The Latoria types, yeah? Anything that comes from the more tropical areas, anything that comes from deciduous type forests, why do you think the leaves drop? Pause for thought. Yeah, there's a reason why those forests are deciduous. It's too cold to hold their leaves in the winter time. But what does vary is the day length. And you can get deciduous forests where the day lengths are still quite long but cold, so the trees dump their leaves, they can't cope with it. And, you know, what happens to your orchids at times like that? Well, they're going to get a bit of a chill. And some of them are geared up for that. It's actually part of their makeup. That's where they live, basically. So they're going to be okay with it. I mean, some orchids get down quite close to freezing at times at night, but they're acclimatised to it. You know, it's not a good idea to do that with a catlia. It's not acclimatised to it probably uh, <laughs> turn its toes up but it's it's important to adjust your regime and don't drive it by the calendar or the time of day now I'm in the middle of watering and I'm a day late but something magical happens here in the daytime Sun comes over the roof and I get really bright light through that end that's why at this time of year that shaded netting one layer stays on the level of light in here through that single layer is incredibly bright. It's really good. Shade netting on that end's gone. Why? Because of that flipping great stonking tree out there. I don't even know if you can see it. But it's still in leaf. Okay, they're turning, they're starting to get yellow. A couple of good windstorms and a lot of those will come down. But it's such a large tree, even when all the leaves are off, the sun is so filtered as to be weak. Yeah? So once that sun goes behind that tree, I've lost my bright light for the day. Until it comes out where that bit of blue sky is. And it comes out and it drops down behind that roof. It's only there for about, this time of year, about an hour and a half. That will get less as we head into the depths of winter until such time as the bit of sun that sticks out behind that tree is negligible. It's starting to set. It's lost its power. <clears throat> so, days are short. Yeah? My nighttime temperatures are dropping down. I've got heater, a heater to keep the minimum at where I want it, but nonetheless, it's getting used, which means the temperatures at night are down there. Yeah? So, cooler nights. Yeah? Shorter days. How much growing is going to be going on? It's just simple, isn't it? It's nowhere near as much. And if there's nowhere near as much growing going on, what don't you need as much of? Water. That's the obvious one. What else don't you need so much of? Feed. It's as simple as that. You, you know, in, in the UK and similar latitudes and longitudes where you get those short, you know, late winter, uh, sorry, late autumn, winter and very early spring, you get those really short days. Your orchids in the main are going to slow right down. Some will go to a standstill. Some need to come to an abrupt halt. 
because they want a winter rest of sorts, yeah? But others don't, they're continuous growers. But they won't continue growing at the rate they did through your spring and summer. They will slow right down, yeah? Unless you artificially change things by having lights, you know? heater, airflow, all that sort of thing, and try and maintain a summer atmosphere for them. Quite honestly, there are some orchids you do that to, they'll start going downhill because they need the break. It's part of their makeup. They need that rest in the winter. It's how they are. And you'll sacrifice your blooms if you keep them growing on. It's as simple as that. So you need to know the difference between those that rest in the winter because of where they come from. It's not because they want to, it's because of where they come from. You know, temperatures drop right down. Rains stop in certain parts of the year. Well, they don't stop altogether, but they drop right down. So they haven't got, you know, the rains that they've had in perhaps the rainy season. So they adjust and you need to follow suit. But in the UK and similar latitudes and longitudes, including some farther north and to a degree, an amount farther south. You're going to get the short days. And without those long days, by the time the poor little orchids have rubbed their bleary eyes and woken up for the day, it's time to go to bed again. So they don't grow much. If they don't grow much, they don't need much feed. And they don't need watering anywhere near as often. Simple as that. Even the ones that have to stay permanently moist are better off getting almost dry instead of saying staying soggy wet if you can't keep the temperatures up and the day lengths orchids don't really want to be soak, soaking wet you know you, you you'll start getting molds and things like that because of the lower temperatures so um <clears throat> it's that time of year for me i'm afraid where the watering frequency drops right off and the amount of water they get when i water them drops right off to some they miss a run so they might go two weeks with no water at all. Yeah, I mean, I don't water on a calendar basis. I judge it by the number of days since I last watered compounded by what sort of days have we've had. Now we've just had yesterday a miserable, dull, rainy day where these orchids in here got hardly any enough light to even rub their bleary eyes and wake up. Yeah, today, crystal clear blue sky brilliant sunshine but it's flipping cold outside it's not in here but it is outside but the light level was much higher today so they might have rubbed their bleary eyes and woke up a bit and no sooner does that happen the sun goes behind that flipping tree and they start thinking mm, is it bedtime again you know the days are short it's as simple as that and they react to it they slow down some almost grind to a halt and if they're not bursting with life and actively growing like mad they don't need the water and the feed. You need to tail off. Just run it down gently. Don't suddenly stop. <laughs> that doesn't happen in the natural world. Gently. Do things gently. Adjust levels accordingly. Okay, so, um, yeah. Uh, things are doing okay out here, but it, it is. I've noticed lots of things are slowing down. Even new growths that were bursting with energy over the last couple of months and pushing on, they're still slowing down. Yeah, and if they slow down, they don't need as much water and they certainly don't need as much feed. So adjust your routines. Don't get stuck in a regimental routine where it's Wednesday, I must water and feed. Your plants aren't like that. Yeah. So think about what you're up to. <clears throat> don't go mad drowning everything when you don't get the daytime temperatures and you don't get the lengths of days for them to be able to actively grow like they do in your real growing season. They're going to slow up naturally whether you slow up with them or not. If you don't slow up with them, you'll end up with soggy bottoms and soggy bottoms equals root rot, especially in lower temperatures. You're better off drying your plants off in between. And then the thing that I adjust dramatically is the amount of water each time I water. You know, I pour four or five litres of water through a pot in the real growing season when I've got heat and long days, you know, 15, 16 hour days, beyond what they're used to. From where they come from, they don't get day lengths that long, but they get much more intense light. So I balance it. 
But quite honestly, when things are growing like mad, with day lengths like that, you've got a job to overwater anything unless your media's breaking down, in which case it'll hold the, hold the moisture longer. So you need to adjust a bit. But um, yeah, this time of year, things get almost dry and some things dry right out. And then they don't get an absolute soaking, they get a trickle water. They get some water, but they don't get flooded like I do through the real growing season. They won't use it. They haven't got the daylight. They haven't got the length of day. They haven't got the daytime temperatures, or certainly not in my grow room. I don't heat in the day. If it doesn't get natural heat, then tough. They stay as they are. And quite honestly, if it's a dull day, well, they're not going to grow much, are they? What do they need the water for? <laughs> you know, <laughs> just apply a bit of logic here and there. Don't keep plants absolutely soaking wet when you've got really short day lengths and no heat. They won't use it and you start losing roots. And you start getting moulds in your pots and all sorts of nasty things like that start developing. Anyway, <clears throat> it's just, just a quick chat really about what happens in the UK winter. If you don't adjust and you carry on as normal, you will end up with soggy pots. And soggy pots and lower temperatures leads to problems. You can easily avoid those problems. Just think a bit. Don't just water because it's Wednesday. Water because your plants could do with some. Quite honestly, in the UK winter, I go along the lines, it's a little saying, it's not mine, it came from somewhere else, either in a book or from another grower or something like that. If you look at your um, orchids and they look like they ne might need a bit of water in the winter, well, don't. Leave it another day or maybe even two, yeah? Don't err on the side of caution and over water when you've got low temperatures and short day lengths. You will do your root systems no good at all. Yeah? It's not how they naturally grow. Mind you, most of them don't naturally grow with day lengths down near eight hours, do they? So we have to adjust to them. Yeah? Not force them to adjust to us and get drowned in water because it's Wednesday, even though, even though your temperatures are only 15, 16 degrees and you've only got eight hours of daylight. Just think about what you're up to. When your plants need water, by all means give them some. If they're hardly growing at all, how much feed are they going to use? Not a lot. Well, you keep pouring it in the pot, you'll cause problems. You know, if they're not going to use the feed, then just don't give it to them. Simple as that. Plants that are actively growing, feed them water well, but adjust it to your season in your part of the world. It's as simple as that. Just apply a bit of thought, a bit of logic. <laughs> and don't go mad. Quite honestly, in the UK winter, it's much better to not water for a day or two than actually water too soon and your plant gets soggy at the base. And it just, it's a recipe for trouble. Yeah, you might get away with it, but it's a recipe for trouble. Don't keep plants soggy in low temperature and short day lengths. They're going to react by dumping roots. They're not going to be happy. And who knows, you might even start getting mould and mushrooms and God knows what growing in your pot because it's too wet and too cold. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. that was, I didn't want that to be long. It was just, a, you know, the changes that happen. And it's easy to forget <clears throat> you know, we're heading out well into November now in the UK. It's been flipping cold at nights lately. You know, temperatures are getting down. You know, my heater's kicking out in and out all night long now to just keep that minimum temperature going. And um, I've got a... Oh, the heater's on the floor at the moment because I've been using the table. But the heater sits there as far back in that corner as it can so that it's as far away from the plants as it can. And it pushes the warm air out. And as soon as that heater kicks in on the thermostat, so does that. Yeah? And that distributes that air that is actually too warm for the plants, but it distributes it and spreads it around until the thermostat kicks back in and shuts it off again. Yeah? And then it ticks on and off through the night. And if we get a real cold snap, it'll be doing it during the day as well. 
you don't want daytime temperatures cooler than nighttime temperatures. That's just well, standing on your head, isn't it? It's upside down, back to front. No good for anything, that sort of thing. So uh, anyway, uh, that'll do. It's just a chat about seasonal, seasonal changes. Um, they don't happen overnight. They happen gradually. You know, uh, my days are still not down as short as they will be. But apart from yesterday, when it chucked it down all day, um, we do get lovely bright sunny days. But the amount of time the sun is on this grow room is minimal. I'm lucky to get three hours here through that shade netting. That's good light, excellent light. And then the sun goes behind that big tree. And that effectively is the last of the sun for the, for the day. That's it, it's gone. Because by the time it comes out there, it's setting. It's lost its strength. Just get a little hour at the end of the day that brightens it up in here. It looks great, but that's because my eyes adjust to it. The light level's not good at that time of day. So that's my strong light only when it's not cloudy. So, you know, plants are living in the dark. <laughs> they don't need their sunglasses on this time of year, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, just think about your seasonal changes. If, if you live in a place where the seasonal changes are virtually non-existent, well then, think yourself lucky. And a lot of us don't. And we do have to accommodate. And the worst thing you can do is keep plants soggy when they're colder. They don't like it. And obviously there are some that need that distinct rest if you're going to force those blooms out. And I've got quite a lot of those type of dendrobiums. Yeah, they're slowing right down now. Some of them are starting to drop some leaves. It's that time of year. That's not a panic, that's natural. Yeah, I mean even this great big cane here, that's an anosmon. The leaves are just starting to yellow. That's its season's growth. Unfortunately, it has got two new growths up there, which is a nuisance, but uh, so be it. Um, but yeah, it's this, this cane is coming to the end of its season. It'll get its terminal leaf. That'll be it. And then as we progress through the winter, the leaves will yellow and drop. And then hopefully we'll get a mass of buds in the um, early spring. That's how they work. Yeah, they come from deciduous forests where the rains slow down to next to nothing. And they do get some quite bright light in early spring. Yeah, so um, you try and replicate it as best you can. But winter resting dendrobiums are difficult. In as much if you withhold water too much from them, especially if you've got dry air, your canes will shrivel. And if they go down too much, they will not recover next year. They'll stay shriveled and they won't support the plant. So you've got to go careful. It's a balancing act. You need to get that water slowed right down and the feed stopped. But you don't want your canes desiccating and shriveling. Losing the leaves on certain dendrobiums is a natural process. It's not a panic. You don't need to start chucking buckets of water over them because you think they're drying out. It's a natural process. It takes a few years, quite honestly, it certainly did with me, to get your head round what's really going on. And the easiest thing to do is go and have a look at where they come from and what's going on there. And then try and replicate it. Anyway, uh, that'll do for this one. As I said, <laughs> I'm having a memory lapse at the moment because at the end of this video, I've forgotten what the point was. <laughs> <laughs> More coffee, nurse. So don't keep your plants soggy when you've got lower temperatures and shorter days. It's a recipe for disaster. Give them just enough to tick over. And if in doubt, leave it out. <laughs> That's not my expression, but it serves the UK winter and other places, you know, on a similar latitude, longitude, to be technical. Yeah, you've got really short days, if in doubt, leave it out. If it looks like it might need watering today, it probably doesn't. It can wait till tomorrow or even the next day. It's quite a few plants. Don't mind being dry for a few days. Cattleyas, a lot of dendrobiums, you know, some things like that wet dry cycle. And it's much more difficult to achieve when you've got, you've lost your daylight, you've lost your heat. So it takes them longer to dry out. 
and some of them don't like it. My Tolumnias like to have a wet dry cycle every single day. Well, sorry mates, you can't have it in the winter. I haven't got the heat and I certainly can't afford to produce that amount of heat artificially. So if the sun don't come in the glass, it don't get very warm in here, I'm afraid. <laughs> All I do is stop the night temperatures dropping too low. That's, that's the best I can do. Anyway, enjoy your orchids and uh, I'll see you next time.